Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the November 16th meeting of the Amherst Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we can read the little statement. Kim, do you have the statement? But I have it too. All right, so pursuant to the acts, uh, chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 22, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone and no in-person attendance will be permitted, but every effort will be made to assure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. Okay, and then um, just, I know that Amber really always appreciates it if we do a roll call um, out loud and then it's in the notes. So um, Stefan had told me that he was not available to be here, but um, so I'm here and if everybody else can just say hi. Yeah, Marcus is here. So. Tremblay here. Chris Lindstrom here. And Eve Vogel is here, and Guilford, of course, is here. Okay. All right. Um, so as I had uh, said in the email when I sent out the agenda, I mean, I would like to, you know, spend some of our, a good part of our meeting talking about that item four, you know, the role of TAC and TSO and the council and, you know, what tech is and all those kind of like bigger questions and also to get input from the members. Um, but just before we get to that, if it's okay, it'd be great to just have some updates, just these quick updates. Um, so on, under item three, so item two was public comment period. We don't have any members of the public here, um, except for Eve. Um, and item three was about um, updates. And so the first one was proposed streetlights policy. So my understanding is that the proposed streetlights policy from Councillor Tenneke and Devlin got there was referred to the town manager um, by TSO at TSO's last meeting. And, um, and that basically in the town manager would lead staff looking into it and providing feedback. So Guilford, do you have any updates on that at all? Uh, no. Okay. Oops. My computer's going to do something weird here. I got to stop it. Don't let it do a Windows update. It's doing, it's doing a Dell update. Um, right. Hopefully I stopped it. Okay. okay. Sorry. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and then, sorry. um, the, the next one was just the traffic safety zone at Cushman, with the Cushman Children's Center. So I'd included in the information I sent out to the members, just the bo both the um, memo that was from Councilors Griesmer and Shane about that with their proposal of what changes should take place. Um, but at the last council meeting on Monday, it was referred to TSO with a request for TAC input. And there was a request to that they report back to the council on December 18th. And that it was also okay at that time if they realized that they didn't have time to get to it before the new council, if they carried it over, but they wanted an update. Um, and one of the things that had come up during the town council discussion was whether, and I had included um, the town manager's memo too before that safety zone provision of the mass general laws was adopted is whether the like adequate, you know, engineering and safety studies had already been conducted um, because the memo from the counselors didn't mention that at all. It actually um, hasn't been conducted. So, and I think, and under the statute, as the town manager's memo said, it said that you have to conduct those studies before you create one of these zones. Yes. So, okay. So, so I'm sorry, did you say that a study has not been conducted? No. Right. No. So do you think that that would be, do you have any information go for it on when you think that that would happen or? So the consultant we use for that stuff is giving me a price and I oh, hope okay. probably in a week or so. So 
so would the idea be that they would conduct it, I guess, like once the UMass students are back too? Yes. Right, sometime in the early spring or something. Yes. I mean, what we did was a, a stop sign study and okay. we did a, a rough um, a rough speed study, but it doesn't meet the requirements that's actually in that document from MassDOT. Okay. And do you have any information? I was curious, and I was actually thinking of sending this out to a listserv, like a statewide listserv, but um, do you have information on other communities that have adopted these traffic safety zones? I think everybody is adopt is is actually passing the they're doing what they need to to do it but they some i don't know if anybody's actually done one like has actually created them i don't know if anybody okay. has yeah okay i was just curious about it um maybe i'll send it out to the listserv anyway yeah um, you get, are you gonna get the uh transportation guys base state to do it well that's what i mean yeah that's the listserv i was thinking of that goes out to all the well, I work with those guys and that goes out to all the DPWs yeah. and consultants and stuff. If anybody had any information, I thought, but I didn't want to, you know, repeat what anybody's already done. So. No, no. Um, I mean, we haven't asked. Yeah. Um, and oh, Joe and Amber, just for the record. So Joe is now here too. Thank you for joining us, Joe. Uh, everybody, thank you. Okay. So we're just going through the informational updates. I have a question about the um, safety zone um, and the proposed, um, I'm just looking at what safety zones are. And um, so are these like school zones? Are those also safe? Is that a safety zone? Because I see it says the safety zone should contain one, oh, one or more. I thought it said more than one. Sorry, I read that incorrectly. One or more areas have potential conflicts. Um, but are those schools, are school zones included or is that a special? Um... School, school zone exists already. So what they've oh, okay. done is kind of extended school zone with some changes to these other things. Got it. Okay. And then I, I one thing that's come up too, right, is because the Safe Reach to School program, which is our next item, but that because Safe Reach to School got expanded to be K through 12 and it used to just be K through eighth grade. Is that you could now have like school zone signs like at the high schools, for example, where they're not currently there. I don't know. Gilford, do you just you, you have any that. of those yet? We don't you have any of those. We haven't we haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I mean, I only know this because now my kids okay, yes, they drive their freaking cars to the high school, which is an <laughs> easily walkable distance. Five and minutes, how far right? do you live again? Don't she lives. Even. <laughs> I am ashamed to admit this. It's I like, would hang your head in shame, yes. I, I am. I'm shamed, ashamed. And um, But anyway, um, especially with all the new drivers, that intersection, you know, when you're come, the intersection you take to get into the school from triangle is so treacherous especially for new drivers are which, you talking about if you're up the hill there's only one I, yeah i don't know what no, that is. because triangle? because well, i know on the triangle but i was thinking about um the one taylor street i think it's the it's taylor or taylor. Is it, um, mattoon. Mattoon. mattoon yeah mattoon does a weird by the by the um by the baseball field right oh. there whatever that is it is so it's, it's dangerous <laughs> but i was also thinking about the one like on the curve like that now there's a flashing crosswalk like the, um, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons the one at the top that's of, the like, one that you the, Amher that's the, one that the you amherst college about. dorms and stuff oh yeah 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 that's church. the one that's churchill church but then i also find actually because my child misses the bus way too often in the morning and I'm always driving him. <laughs> but I also find that on, if I'm on um, Main Street at the Triangle intersection, that it's really hard when there's a lot of traffic coming into town and that the way that it's angled, you know, right. with the other roadway is that you yeah. go past the traffic signal I mean, sometimes I don't, but a lot of times people are kind of going past the traffic signal, but then you can't because it's not posted anywhere except for like above. 
you can't actually see like when it's going to change, but then there's so much like oncoming traffic and it never yeah, really, it never really feels fun. like very comfortable to me. So yeah. now I wait at the stop line, which is before the little street that goes over to route nine. But, um, but people think that that's really weird. But if you actually go into the intersection to like hang out and wait to do a left turn, you can't yeah. see the street light. So. Yeah, there's a I, so I I wonder if there might be a I mean, way of signal, make, sorry. I wonder if there might be a way of improving, you know, using the new guidelines then to help improve right around the um the the immediate area of the high school because there also are a couple um um you know students are I don't know what that neighborhood is and we've heard about this from multiple people and there have been requests in the past so the high school dumps out onto triangle, right? This like that road where there is one way back onto, I, I don't know. And Cray um, Street, it's called Cray, Cray Street. Cray, and, Cray, and, and is across from that? that yeah. So the high, the high school dumps out, Mattoon goes all the way around, dumps back out on triangle. Right. And then the next intersection down is Prey and uh, right. Chestnut. But and before that, that, that um, neighborhood that's behind, I don't know what that neighborhood is back you mean like like Taylor and stuff like over there That's or Cottage Street? Oh, Cottage and like Cottage. No, Street, no, like... the one across. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not being very clear, but people are crossing from. They use that as a kind of shortcut to get to from like downtown yeah, between the school and town, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You can cut yeah. across back into behind. Well, here yeah. we can like yeah. pull up a map or something. And That's that is also. Smith. Yeah, Smith Street. And I know that the kids are using that all the time in the morning. You know, there's no crosswalk there. I don't know. I feel like that's pretty dangerous intersection too. I mean, you know, these are still kids. Sometimes not, you know, kids who don't really understand roadways very well. So maybe there are some um, improvements that, you know, with this new newer law we might be able to make um oh you think with the safety zones is that what you were thinking yes Kim? i don't know but you don't think so it's okay you know i, I watched that we I, we get to watch we get firsthand to see some of the coolest stuff things i've never seen people do before i've watched a lady who was definitely in a straight lane in a, in a right turn lane go left across a line of traffic that was turning left Plus, cut off the traffic that was going straight. I mean, and she wasn't. I don't think anyone in here is in the age category she's in, and right. we're all younger than she is. It's it's like people. They're, I don't know what well, people just do what they want to do. I've been seeing people who live in some of the rental properties on, say, like South Prospect and yes or, well south prospect especially i guess is like they're they drive in like against the one way because it's like much more convenient for them than going around I oh guess, yeah that oh, that happens a lot really? i would i would suggest kim um so the process that um the cushman um this cushman proposal went through is they're basically saying, look, on uh, we've been contacted by the board. We've been contacted by the parents. <coughs> the parents have um, kind of brought this up. And so we're, we have a developed idea and what, here's what we want to do. I, I think we probably would want to just meet with Mickey and Taleb, um, maybe a couple of, you, you know, maybe some, the student council at the high school. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Approach it in the same way. I'm not sure that, you know, us just winging in and saying, no, I, you know, I you agree. Know, I think it's just, um, it probably, I think it's worth a conversation. And I know, I think there would be receptivity from the leadership at the school. But I, I feel like you could also start to, I mean, though, Guilford, I guess, can tell it, like if we, if the, um, around the high school, like on triangle was like signed as a um, school zone. Yeah. Because well, now, that's because now high thing. schools can yeah. be a school zone. So Guilford, you said you didn't have any of the signs, um, but is there anything else besides the signs needed to create a school zone? 
and to sign it near the high school the high school um we can look at it we but, you know, it can, can it also just be like one of those things that flashes at the time schools getting in and out? Because those well, are really the, that, the that problem will, times. That that allows you to do that. Which, you know, I think that seems to make a lot of sense because especially during the school year, especially I think at like, you know, the not Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which are the school starts at 9.05 and UMass starts at 9. So classes are at nine. So I think, I don't know, I feel like that's not a bad idea, but. So, I mean, the thing you're talking about was what, to, whether to, to support the request right. for our study at Cushman. Yes. Well, yeah, no, I mean, this Unless is off topic. To so, but the other thing was, is that we actually haven't received a referral yet from TSO. Like I know TSO is meeting after TAC tonight. Um, and I guess it would be up to TSO one if they're going to take it up this session or if they're going to carry it over to 2024 and two what type of feedback they want from TAC and um so so but that I, I just wanted to bring it up as and just to you know have it on people's radar so we'll see what TSO decides and um yeah but I mean I guess in the absence of a traffic study how can we um and and you know it's really a kind of niche part of town right N not many people are traveling on that part of town unless really they live there no one's Cushman yeah that oh, well, that, oh that you're part. saying on Henry Street on Henry well, Street it's a cut through for what yeah it's a cut through going, for people. Uh, yeah for what tell me That's I don't know People coming from like Pelham going to UMass or go through there if they're going to the north end of the town or going oh, I through. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Because yeah, they just use Henry Street. Street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They go up anything going up Northeast Street. Yeah. They'll cut through yeah. there. And if no, they don't have to go to there or if they're going up to Leverett or whatever, they'll. Uh, no traffic. Through. They'll no cut traffic through signals. by the. Yeah. And Leverett and Shootsbury. The, the Leverett and Shootsbury come that way too. Oh, I don't right. Know if this is yeah, related, yeah. but um, can we teach like young drivers how to take a left against traffic? That's all I want to say. <laughs> a left against so in, traffic. If we figure that out, can we expand it to adults? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can we teach people to drop, park in the back end parking, backing in? It's actually doing better. It is. Though. Somebody yeah, told me that recently that they yeah. hadn't been downtown in two years and when they were outraged and they said nobody sensible would ever design this and they parked front in. So so got that. Anyway, My kid ahead. won't go down, won't park downtown because of that. So, okay, but we that, digress. That could be a plus, right? <laughs> yeah. We digress. Well, considering how close you live to do they downtown, walk? Right? That's a good thing. <laughs> Don't even, don't I even. Didn't. All right, so um, let's see, safe routes to school. So um, Chris and I had met with uh, the superintendent, I guess more than a month ago now. And Chris, have you heard anything else from the schools? I have not, no, I think I'm getting, um, um, I think I'm getting back on the agenda, but it's a little bit unclear when. So, um, you know, my request to Doug Slaughter was to be a convener between, um, you know, kind of various entities dealing with transportation on the new school site and the um, two intersections off of the school site. Uh, and he didn't say no. Um, but wanted to just kind of check and make sure that he wasn't stepping on anybody's toes. That makes sense. And um, I said that I would follow up um, in a month if I hadn't heard. So I haven't heard from him. So I'm, uh, con I've contacted Deb to get back on the agenda um, to probably just, I would imagine he might cancel the meeting and just send me a note, but we'll see what he says. Um, I have met with the parents too. Um, I think I must have said this to you, Tracy, or somebody, but we are going to do the um, the Massachusetts Day. Um, the December one? The no, December one? Um, not the December one. We're going to do the springtime. Spring one, awesome. Yeah. 
yeah. So the Sounds parents great. are excited to do that. Um, so it's just a matter of whether or not we can um, get the ball rolling on, you know, just kind of a conversation. And then um, I but, and I was on the um, safe routes to school. Did you have any other updates? Sorry, for us not to cut you off. Oh, I just said that if it's kind of like a no or something mushy from the superintendent's office, um, Guilford, you'll probably be hearing from me <laughs> with the same request. I'll just look, keep looking for somebody being willing to convene. Um. Okay, so I sat in on um, a webinar yesterday on the Safe Routes to School program. And and one thing that Chris and I had talked to schools about, Chris has mainly had those conversations um, about with like the PE teachers and like other people at the schools who were willing to get involved with Safe Routes to School is that the Safe Routes to School program, they actually have like DESE approved curriculum both for students on Safe Routes to School and also for training, like the trainers. Like What's sort of DESE? DESE is the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Oh, okay. So they actually have like approved curriculum where they can go into schools and teach it. And they also like to really like train the trainers, so like to actually train mm -hmm. the teachers and they offer that as well. It's like a 10 hour course, you know, you get, you know, professional development credits for it and then um and then that would enable like in future years i mean as we had talked about with the um similar to like the fire prevention program and things that it could be sustained you know because people in the district would be like leading those classes each year um but the thing that was interesting to me is i didn't realize that like it was all like vetted through the department of elementary and secondary education and so on so, i did um i did hook Doug up. Doug Slaughter wanted to meet with um, our Western Mass Safe Roots um, coordinator and the curriculum director of the school district. So okay. um, I'm pretty sure that meeting got set up. I don't know if it has occurred. And that's excellent. And I mean, the Western Mass Safe Routes to School Coordinator is pretty amazing. So I'm sure she'll do a good job. Okay, cool. And then, okay, road project updates, DPW. So Gilbert, do you have any more updates for us on, um, I don't know, Pomeroy or anything else? Signage on Route 9 or? Every, I just thought everything is done on Route Nine. So, so I had a yeah, I had a question about the intersection of um, University Drive and Route Nine, and um, the bike boxes. Like, there's all the signage for bike boxes on the Route Nine side, like with them saying like bike boxes here and so on. Like, are those going to be painted before the winter? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if they'll be painted. But I think he's almost, I think they're almost done. So, but I'm it's in sure. the roadway, right? It's just not painted. So, yes, it's been, it's been ground in. I could suppose to go okay. there. But... Okay. Because I think there's at least like four um, signs about like the bike boxes, like at each corner of the intersection. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, cool. And so for no, anybody who doesn't else. know, so for anybody who doesn't know, the bike boxes are set up as like safer ways for bicyclists to make left turns like across traffic mm -hmm. where they can like wait in the bike box area and then they can proceed like almost like a pedestrian or something and like get across the intersection and not have to wait in the left turning lane, which although some mm -hmm. cyclists feel really comfortable with that, many do not. <laughs> so... So the bike boxes are set up as an alternative yeah. where they wait more closer to the sidewalk. So, but I, I did have a question though. I am confused like with some of the bike signage on Northampton Road, you know, going towards University Drive because there's a place where it says like the bike route ends, which it's just, um, I guess, west of Blue Hills Road. Yeah, and you're supposed to go on the sidewalk. But what to say like the bike route ends, but then literally like 
you know, just a few feet after that, it says bike, bike, and then like the bike lane. I don't know. It's just sort of weird. Like, cause one, I didn't even know like what is the official bike route and aren't bike routes sometimes bike lanes and some, mm -hmm. it's sort of weird yeah. to have this end sign. And then there's like a lot of other bike infrastructure. Yeah. The, I mean, it's supposed to tell you to go on to the sidewalk and use the the wider sidewalk. Nope. Uh, but that's actually where it ends. No, see that end of bike route is where the at Blue Hills, the wider path ends because the wider path ends. It. I know. I guess you're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, right, no, you, just... might, you might be right. It it begins it... up at it begins up out towards Lincoln, so it probably ends at Blue Hills. So and it then... probably means to get off the bike path and get on the road. Right. It's just sort of weird because then just like it passed it, then you have like bike. I mean, can bike routes be on road or do bike routes have to be off road? Well, they didn't. <clears throat> There's this huge concrete duck bank on the right side of the road there and they couldn't move it. So what they did was instead of mm. moving it, they moved the bike lane onto the side of the road where the sidewalk is and narrowed down the shoulder and called that the bike lane. And then when you get to Blue Hills, yeah, Blue Hills is at the bottom. Then you get back on Route 9 because at that point, the duck bank goes deeper. Oh, sure. They... Yeah, yeah. I just meant like in terms of signage, like because it's still the bike lane is the bike route at that point, right? Like, like it is, but you're supposed, to get, been designated... you're supposed to get off the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just. <laughs> they, they, they came up with it. They have a bunch of I... signs we don't agree with either, but it's their road. Oh, okay. All right. We'll leave it alone then. <laughs> okay. Because also just like, um, you know, visually, like if you have a lot of different signs and people just end up getting confused if you don't need them all. <laughs> but, um, okay. Um, and then, oh, and I was wondering too, just about. I mean, it uh, sounds like we need to talk to the state about it, right? If yeah, we have concerns. We, we could ask. Um, if you want, yeah, if you want to make a change, it's with the state. If we um, can't figure it out, how can we expect people who aren't traffic geeks to figure it out? Well, I mean, that's something we need to talk to the state about, right? Well, so on Route 9, there used to be, I'm glad that this has finally gone, there used to be, like, sign for, like, park and ride lot, because a long time ago, like, 20 years ago, there was a park and ride lot at the Big Y Plaza, but then it got discontinued, and then that park and ride lot sign with an arrow was there for, like, 10 years or something after it got discontinued. <laughs> so, like, people could turn, and then they're, whatever, so, <laughs> yeah, excess signage can be challenging. Um does did Amherst get those four foot passing signs yet? Yeah. Like, go around. I could. Okay. Do you know? Yeah, like, where, we, where we, we got go them. We're going to or... we're holding them for when it starts getting nasty outside to, for something to do. You can't put them in then, right? Because the ground will be frozen. Well, they're pretty much, you're, there's a lot of leeway on where you can put them. So like, if you look on route nine and Hadley, they're sticking them. the state is sticking them on existing posts. So oh. we're going to probably go that same route. Oh, okay. Interesting. So how many of them did you get? Uh, more than we probably should have gotten, but there's a lot, there's a lot of them. Oh, hmm. Okay. I mean, I I noticed the ones in Had like Hadley seems like they have a lot too. Like they seem to be up on a lot of corridors. But well, the state put them up on all theirs. Like Route okay. Nine in Hadley is all state road. But like um like Amity at the end of Am like at the town line, there's one there. I think hmm. when you're entering Hadley. Well, I, yeah, and I guess like 47 I, in Hadley, right? That is that state. And I don't know. Well, actually, no, that's Hadley's. So if Hadley. Okay, so I've seen a bunch like that seem like Hadley put them up. But... Yeah, okay. they're probably putting them up. I mean, they were giving them away like they were. No, I know. Yeah. I still wish they didn't just have bicyclists, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> so, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I'd love to. You know, like once those are up to do some kind of like ride and um, that gets some like PR for uh, mm -hmm. for those signs and also the law. Uh, okay, so all right, so now we're at the roll attack and TSO and the council and everything. And so, I mean, I just 
you know, because a lot of questions have come up and um, it's actually interesting too, because there's actually an item on the TSO agenda for tonight, like which is right after our meeting. And part of it is they're talking about like how they have outreach to committees and use committees and communicate with committees and so on. And so, I mean, it's a struggle, not just with our committee, but also with other committees. Um, and so I really just wanted to, I mean, I was thinking about it too because of the new council. So we wrote that other memo back in 2022 when there was a new council and there had been, I mean, one, there was a period when, you know, the idea was like, oh, we probably won't have tech anymore. And there were some misconceptions about what tech is or what tech does. And so with all those new, there were a lot of new counselors and we wanted to just have a memo just to kind of clear up like what tech is and you know that we're advisory and that we've had like a positive role in a lot of projects. Um, so one thought I had is like whether we'd want to, I know that they're mainly incumbents who got reelected to the council um, who will be serving in the new council, but if we wanted to do something similar or so on, so. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to just change the date and send it again. Yeah. Just to remind people. Agreed. I mean, if we had any, well, I'll pull it up. Hold on. But, you know, if we had any, um, if we had anything we wanted to add, you know, I've been, well, like, when I look back on this council and what TAC has contributed to compared to the last council, like, I don't feel like TAC has done very much. Well, and we not, haven't. And, because but they part haven't of it, too, is like, they, right, they haven't referred things to us, so... Um, yeah, I think I honestly think it's fine just to send what we have there because it shows the big things we've done in the past, gives them an idea of what we can do because we know we didn't get asked to do a lot of what we could have right. done right this time round. So sure. let's give mm -hmm. them, give them sort yeah. of the the big picture, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully this time you know things will get sorted. But we'll see. Yeah, so. right. Maybe. So the last time I just pulled it up, and right, so last time we just reminded people, particularly again because there were more new counselors, is like, here's the vision statement of TAC, and um, and here's the different projects that we got involved with, and um, and and then there was another document. I mean, it's pretty much true. I think we're still in the same place <laughs> almost that we were like two years ago. Right, but we we also made a lot of progress in the years before that, and yeah. I mean we made a lot of progress, and then nobody's using us, and right. sure, and also there there um, frankly haven't been a lot of like real policies put forward in the last two years. Like people, I don't know why is that. Well, and I was also thinking about because TSO the last few meetings, I think it's on the agenda again tonight is like talking about North Pleasant Street, like the north north of campus, you know, from the roundabout like up to They're Pine talking Street. about that tonight. They're talking about it. They've been talking about it the last few meetings and I said, "Well, you know, TAC, we did these site visits and but nobody ever contacted TAC about what They're we were even talking did. to me about it. I was told it was being so, put off next year. Oh, well, there you go. So, I mean, it definitely seems like there could be, maybe that should be in part of the outreach memo too, to make sure that, um, that these they know. are talking to the right staff and committees who've already looked at these things and like, right. I mean, Guilford DPW has like drawn up detailed plans and everything. So, well, I don't think anyone really knows. I mean, if you looked at all of the counselors, like statements, like, it's as if they don't know there's a like grand plan or there could be a grand plan or there should be a grand plan about, you know, when certain roads or sidewalks get repaired or why they get repaired or, or, you know, I, it, oh, for it's sure. annoying. It's really, I'm super annoyed that we sit here and we are thoughtful body and we don't, we don't get used and they're, you know, the counselors I see have way too much on their plate. Like mm -hmm. so many things, like doesn't make sense why we're twiddling our thumbs. Yeah. That's the kind of thing I think we should <clears throat> somehow put in our preamble. 
Tracy, um, when you mentioned that the street lights policy has been referred to the town manager, that is is that also a path where the TAC would be used? I mean, could Paul just turn and um, refer the streetlight policy to us for feedback? Or do we um, you kind of have to be working at the behest of a counselor or counselors? Well, so it's interesting, right? So we are, I mean, TAC is a committee that was created like it's under the jurisdiction of the town manager, right? The town manager is the person who is responsible for appointing people to the TAC. Like we are not a council committee per se. So in my view, you can have staff, staff can ask TAC for feedback. I mean, there were a number of reasons it got referred. I mean, one thing is that the, well, one aspect was that the most recent version and, and most of the versions of the streetlights policy since it was first introduced to the council are like, it's super detailed in terms of like, what is the policy? And some people felt like some of those details should just be left to staff, you know, or some of them could be included in a bylaw or something. And particularly because the councilors are so busy, some councilors feel like they should be having like kind of a wider view about how they feel generally about state lights and leave like a lot of the technical details, including technical details that will get out of date, like under in a different jurisdiction than a council policy per se. But yeah, it was too, it was too kind of hard, I think, to like separate all those pieces out. And so, um, well, yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I, I can, I can see why a counselor would think that it's just um, a little weird that, you know, we sort of exist and I know we sort of exist as a, um, a, I don't know, by fiat or whatever as a result of the town manager, but the, I, presumably it's so the council could use us, but then they just referred it to the town manager and not to us. And, um, you know, we've never really been formally brought in on the street light policy which kind of fits squarely within our mission and it's a big thing that the town council well, on last year. so one of the things was that um that the some people in the tso and the sponsors um one of whom is a tso member and one of whom isn't like felt like it should not just be something that's just referred to tac because they felt like there's other elements of it, including on like human health and other things. So they thought that if TAC, it was only TAC that that wouldn't address like these other concerns or something. So they, so in the, and there were, and that's why too, you know, there had also been a proposal to create a task force about the streetlights that would pull in like all these different viewpoints beyond transportation. But I think that the TSO, was hesitant to support that, you know, to create another committee and so on. And so just to move it forward in some way before the end of this council, TSO put it in the hands of the town manager. So at some point, I would assume that it would, in order to be adopted, it would probably come back to TSO and they could ask for tax input or Right. The council could support the creation of a task force or, you know, there's many different ways it could go. But it was basically just because they realized that it wasn't going to get resolved all by TSO, you know, in the next month. And so they wanted to do something. And so that's what they did. <laughs> but yeah, but like, I mean, that's an example. And um, right. And I and one reason, I mean, and I was planning to speak to TSO tonight, but I mean, one of my comments would be that in some cases I have commented on transportation topics in town, including the streetlights policy, because they're not being referred to right. TAC. And this is something like I think about these issues like all day, every day. And so when I see these things happening, like I still want to weigh in. And so sometimes I'm just weighing in as myself because, again, nobody asked TAC what we think. <laughs> And in some cases, when I've brought up, like when I've asked counselors, oh, like, is this, 
whatever this transportation related issues is ever going to come to TAC. And he, and I've been told, no, there's already so many people looking at it. Like we don't need tax input or something. Oh yeah. Great. So, um, <laughs> so, so maybe all of us I mean, should just go to the TSO tonight as the public and be like, Hey, do you know this other committee exists and we're here and willing and right. actually able to tackle these issues yeah. in depth? I mean, this has been a problem since what? the I mean, council was problem created. since the change in right yeah. since the yeah, change for in sure. form of government and right. it's always just yeah. been swept under the carpet and you know various reasons whatever it doesn't matter we've just got to keep pounding sure. on the door to either get in or get out right right yeah. either you want and... it or you don't because i mean it I mean... yeah sure it'd be nice to have a committee and all this stuff but maybe we don't need one you know yeah. maybe well, and TSO support... is the way to go that's fine. But then, right. you know, a couple of years later, they're going to realize they've bitten off more than they can chew. But exactly. I mean, I mean it's so ridiculous. It, it's, it's up well, to. Yeah, well, I know. I hear you. But I mean, some people make decisions that way, unfortunately. And I don't know, but it, it, this limbo needs to stop. Oh, absolutely. And, and that, I that's... think, yeah. And I mean, that I mean, again, if, that's why yeah. I have comments for TSO, uh, you know, about it, just because. Um, because yeah. I think too, like I mean, the more it, uncertainty there is about what is tax, what can tax do, what does tax role, like when the more you have those questions, the least likely it is for counselors to be like, oh, let's refer it to TAC, right? So, um, but I like the yeah. idea of resending TAC this memo, I mean, the council, the memo, and we could even say like, hey, this is the memo and it all still applies. So, but I, I do think we need to have a stronger like preamble to the memo. Memo. Okay. I mean, I think we have to say like we have all been doing this for a long time. We are all professionals, and we don't need to exist if you're not using us. Right. Like I, I feel yeah. very strongly about this because we are all professionals. We're all taking time out mm. of our very busy days or time with our family to do this work because we are committed to it and I'm sick of like being overlooked like I want to make this town better I want to make our streets better I want to make it safer and better but if I'm not getting used I have other so, things I can do oh for sure so Kim I mean in that vein right do we want to I mean, I would suggest maybe we send again this 2022 memo with like some yes. kind of cover and that right now we take a motion of exactly what message we want to send. And then we could all vote and say, yeah, I think we should because anonymously at the meeting anything. that we had right before the TSO meeting, we agreed. Um, I mean, do you have some? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think we'd have to be careful with that just with a you know, Robert's right. rulesy stuff. But um we can certainly talk mean? about it. We can amend the memo that yeah. was included. But um I mean I think... keep it as simple as Kim was saying, right? Either you want us or you don't. Right. Uh deal with it, you know. There's yeah, no because... point in beating around the bush on this one. So Yeah, I mean what do we have to lose? We have nothing to lose because we haven't been asked to do anything, even though we're right. all here and we're passionate. Right. And professionals and interested and have some important advice. So to why get. don't we actually, we could say that we want clarification and like, I I mean, I'll just, okay, I don't need to. But I think it's a really good idea to resend this memo and just. But, but I, I would put it, I would just put it with a cover and like say tonight, like we talked about it. And yes. So tack. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say we're seeking clarification. I, I would just put it as simply as Kim was saying, either you want us or you, or don't. you don't. Because we don't need it. to continue to do yeah. this. We can do this in another form. Like we can work on just straight safe streets to school. We can do that outside of this, right? Yeah. Maybe we need to, you know, come up to New York and fix the GW <laughs> after <laughs> Chris Christie's debacle. So so. Eve. Yes. I mean, I guess the question I would ask you guys is if, what if they say, no, we don't want you. Are you guys fine with that? Because yes. I, yeah, I guess yeah, part, yeah, of, absolutely. 
I mean, part of where I'm coming from is I'm thinking about the whole history of this and, and all the way back to the Public Transportation and Bicycle Committee, was, which was created by, that was you know, we were on, both of yeah, us. Yeah, right. And be long before we were on, it was created by a bunch of advocates who felt like, you know, there needed to be a body that was, I, don't, I, I mean, to me, the alternative would all, has always been like, instead of waiting to be told what to do, like the the TAC charge that should have been amended never was, but it basically says TAC has all kinds of potential roles and responsibilities, you know, that you guys basically could just say, we're going to do these things, whether or not people get referred to us or not, because, you know, they won't ever change our charge and they're still in our charge, you know, and they include things like um, reviewing planning um, and development. They include, you um, I mean, the PTBC was very explicitly about advocacy that got a little bit watered down in the tax charge. But, you know, that's very much part of the history of what the institution was created to do. And the TAC, in theory, was a merge of PTBC and, you know, public work. So anyway, it, it is sort of the inheritor of that. But anyway, I just wanted to say that 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 sort of, to me, has always been the other option is to say, we're going to do what we were created to do, whether town wants it or not. You know what I mean? Because well, town we're council. representing the citizens of the town and not just the whatever. The government, the new government style. Only we're, we're representing the town managers, you know, I mean. Cause the, yeah, because that was what it was created to do, yeah, you know, right. it, it, half of it way back when. Anyway. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just saying that to me, those are the sort of the two choices, maybe. And I wouldn't just throw that one out without thinking about it. In that vein, Eve, um, I think accompanying the memo is the possibility, like we could also just write up what we think the priorities for transportation should be as a suggestion or a starting point for the TSO and the full council. Um, and we could... I mean, I, I think, I don't know which one of you was saying all the candidates when they were campaigning, everybody was talking about sidewalk and road repair. Definitely. But yeah. nobody knows, you know, nobody knows at all. I mean, at least in my conversations with Pam Rooney and Anika, they had no idea how to actually and practically. None of them do. Make that happen. And so, um, you know, it's, I'm not, I guess I, I don't really want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. And um, so I don't want to like not send something to put us on the radar screen because it's not absolute perfection. Yeah. But the idea would be, hey, y'all said that you really wanted to, you know, to deal with a transportation issue. So like, you know, here's what here's an agenda that you could enact and you could start doing okay, for the sure whatever. and um and it would just be interesting because i haven't seen any other defined agenda in transportation coming from any of a counselor no. i mean it's just like oh we we can make streets and sidewalks in our district better but also I mean, like some of the requests lame. that some of the requests that counselors have brought forward or even you know, or even individual residents, right? They're not thinking about like the larger transportation plan. No. They're not thinking about the bike network plan. And no, I know because, in some cases, yeah, when, people, I mean, when counselors have said that they, you know, want to advocate for a certain project, it's like, well, okay, that may, you know, that could help with safety in this particular area, but it's already clear that there's a queue of like, projects that have been identified right. a long time ago that still haven't been funded and that it's clear they need to get funded and like that these new proposed projects like they're you know that they they shouldn't be at the necessarily at the top of the line like the top of the pile just because somebody is advocating for them or even a group right. of people are advocating for them well that's the like, problem you considering that I mean, that was one of my comments when they were doing the capital improvement planning <clears throat> process last year about like, you know, that they're, I mean, do you just give, do you just decide to do projects based on like who comes to the meetings and who submits projects? No, you'd want to think about them in that larger context and what's happening throughout town and right. like, because all it things. can't Which just be the squeaky right? wheel. So, yeah, cannot no, sure. be 
squeaky wheel because yeah so that gets back to the original question of do you want us or not right Right. i mean unless they are willing to listen to us none of what you're talking about is actually going to get done right i mean we can advocate till we're blue in the face but until they actually recognize us as a body of input it's pointless so wait yeah, I was just curious. So, you know, I've, I've been pretty engaged with school, which I finish in December, thankfully. So I might be more engaged then. But I'm just curious, is there a world where like TAC collects uh, feedback from voters and kind of con- works it out that way in terms of getting getting noticed? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Joe. That I mean, that's like to Eve's point, that was the charge, right? It was kind of be that middle person, be the person doing a lot of that stuff. But, but not we but I think that the original charge too, but it was kind of hard though, because like if I mean the current version of the charge, which I included, you know, in what I sent out, but it also says that like TAC is responsible for creating and like maintaining the list of like priority projects and addressing yeah. like resident concerns. But the thing is that as an advisory committee, like we don't have you know, we don't oversee staff, like we don't have connection, like power over you know dpw or like other departments in town and so you know people if somebody's complaining about their specific sidewalk or their i mean those aren't things that we can necessarily do like i do think on some of those we should have an advisory role and we also have the context of the plans and the work that's been done over the years i mean when some of these proposals come forward they're just thinking about like that specific intersection or that specific right. need, they're not doing it in a larger context. And that's the value of TAC. Right. right? It's like giving the history, the history. I mean, but the history, but also just the larger framework right. about where does this fit into the overall plan. Right. And and I thought it was valuable, for example, that ECAC just sent that memo to the council about that you that the council needs to move forward on the bike ped plan and on the bike ped map because it's a key part of like the climate action plan right? and that's not happening. So. I just want to, um, I'm sorry, guys, I do need to go again at six 30, but um, I just wanted to interject. I feel that the, maybe um, another challenge has been the change in government. So it's possible that TAC had an elevated, um, sort of profile and was in more use in the town meeting form of government, which to me makes a lot of sense. Moving to the council, um, which is sort of a more traditional um, governing body, decision-making body, what have you, it does kind of throw into question whether or not the TAC can do what it's supposed to do. And part of me just feels like if we all just quit, Tack and became a local nonprofit um, that, you know, did basic organizing, right? Gathering input, ideas, membership, fundraising, and lobbying towards the town, we would have potentially more um, control over the, um, or influence over the agenda coming out of the council because it's a traditional, you know, like if you were in Boston or another town that's been running with a city council or a town government, um, that's how it's done. These types of quite, kind of quasi committees that um, have elements of government in them and also elements of advocacy, they don't exist. It's just create a group, call it Walk Boston, and start building your constituency, and then you start going to the city councilors, and you know, and lobby the mayor and everybody else to get you know what you want to have done done. So there's also a part of me that's just feeling there's the potential there, and we could also just start playing the more traditional role, which is a yeah, yeah. I think you're onto a onto a well, great I point mean- right there. I mean, right, yeah. so for Springfield, they have Walk, Bike, Springfield, and they are very active, and they do a lot of advocacy. I mean, it is it, it can be challenging to sustain a nonprofit or an advocacy organization, though, as we see, it's also challenging to sustain TAC, you know? I mean, um, we're pretty much but, what we would call 
in the UK a quango, like a quasi, like you were saying, Chris, like it's, you know, quasi sort of like government, but not, but maybe, but not really. And it's just like a bunch of unelected people kind of, you know, such as ourselves making these decisions, but we don't have the power that we think we could, we do, right? And so I think we just need to figure out how we can better work in that environment or not, or go, el- right. you know, not go elsewhere, but split off and do what we can do. Because, yeah, I mean, back in, back, we have a dupl- we have to recognize, right? We have a duplication of roles in the current council. There is this body called the TSO, and then there's us. In pre-council, there was just us. So, but, but you know, the TSO, there's this. Yeah. Go on. No, I mean, so TSO, though, is not just transportation, right? TSO oh, is I know it's not, services but and it's, outreach. It's I mean, a, they spend a lot of time on sewer and water. and Yeah, yeah they but the really their main thing is transportation, with. right? It's, we are one yeah, of no. their parts. Yeah. So we are they, duplication they many, of their parts. They have many. Yeah, parts. yeah I'm not yeah. saying they're not. No, only right, right. transportation at no, all. Of course, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. we are duplicative of their scope in some, in some respects. And we Thank see you. ourselves as being a valuable asset to increase their um, ability to cope with all the transportation sides. You know, maybe they need a services committee too uh, to kind of help right. them on that part. But right now, you know, we've gone from a place where we were the only game in town to a place where now... There are multiples of us. So that's, I think, where getting back to, you know, what Kim and I were originally saying, like, what do you want? Do you want us right. or don't you? Because it is a different, it is a different paradigm now and we need to figure out what we're doing. So I think, I mean, one thing is that, like, Chris had suggested that we could look at, no, I agree. I agree. But I also, I have seen that some, TSO leadership or there's you know some cases where TSO is particularly like with the first council compared to the second council like we did get communication from TSO you know in 2021 and things where they said we want you to weigh in on this and we want you to look at these questions and we looked at that and we for yeah. example with the Pomeroy village like right. we gave in yeah no right? we and, had a role then and right? so we, we had we a role but that things. was that yeah. was under the council that just happened to be like a different iteration of TSO yeah, no yeah so, so we just need it that in is stone. TSO and that that you know set of TSO council members like they even had you know they created like guidelines for making decisions about on street parking and they had like different procedures including consult tech or um so just to get it back you know who's ever going to be on tso in the next council like starting in 2024 to say to reiterate you know with our memo like the tac is a resource you know we've been a resource but you need to use us and provide guidance and it, otherwise it doesn't work right um so um, so Chris was mentioning earlier like the idea of talking about our priorities which was the second document that I had sent over, you know, about, because we did go through our own list and working with Guilford and Guilford's list about, you know, these are our priority intersection projects and these are our other priorities. Um, we could do that. We could send that to the new council in 2024 and early 2024 and the new TSO. I guess the question for us now is, do we want to say anything to the council or TSO before that, you know, just about that, we need clarification and it's frustrating that we're not used. I mean, do we want to make any statement, you know, Kim's thing about like, we don't need to exist if you don't want us or you're not using us. I mean, do we want to make any statement to council on the TSO now, or do we want to wait? I, well, I, I thought we were just going to send the memo. Yeah. But I think we, I mean, to Kim's point, I think that it would be good to, I would send the old memo and just have a new kind of cover letter or like yeah. a cover statement and say, hey, this is the memo we wrote you two years ago. It still applies. Yeah, no, that's but, good. That's but good. do yeah, we yeah. want, do well, we want, and I, what statement do we want to say like on that cover statement? And do we want to just as a committee make a motion about, I mean, I was trying to write some language. That's why I put it on the yeah. share. Like we want clarification and we're frustrated. Yeah, but no. Do we I want think to, we say, have to say like that. anything else. Because it's anything else no, I, need yeah. to say. I agree with that. No, I completely agree. With that. I just worry that I think we might 
we can create it now, but do we need to wait till next time to vote on it? That's my only thing. Well, I don't think we have like the well, we don't have quorum anyway. To so yeah, create it, it right yeah. now. But I think yeah. that we do need to get we we do still have a quorum. But oh, we do. Um, oh, cool. Right there for oh, yeah. the thing is that we're not taking action on any we have a quorum and we're not taking I mean our only action is just to send forward a statement. I don't feel like that we would be violating Robert's rules by saying that. Okay. What do yeah. you think? Does, I mean I, I feel think? like we uh, just have to say. Right. Is there anything else that we would want to say in this or we could just leave it at that for now and we could revisit it when we meet again. I think Joe has his hand up. So. I or Joe might have his hand up from before, but oh no, yeah, uh, it's probably from before. Sorry. Okay. I think I think we just have to say. I mean, I it, if we're gonna meet, we should have things to sink our teeth into. We're an active and an interested body, and oh, right. So okay, we are. You know, and and um, the committee we, members committee in the members. absence of being used we have no no reason to exist do you want us do you want not want us i mean it's a very simple kind of with you know i mean you could you could even say i i i I honestly i'm just so sympathetic because it's just it's felt like it's honestly not just been a few years it's been 12 or however many years of just banging our heads on the wall um, and before that, I think it, other people felt that way. Well, we could say, um, you know, no. You know, so, so it might not, you might even say, do you want us as part of the town government? Or do you want us as an advocacy group outside the town government? Because we're going to do one of the two, you know, and we are going to be used and we're going to work to make sure the town thinks, you know, broadly and integratively. Because I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, in the absence of town support, right? We don't have input from knowledgeable and act actionable people like Chris, Christine, Christine, and and um, Guilford, right? I mean, and 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 we don't have a charge. We don't have an official charge from our. Um, town manager either i mean so you know outside of that it's going to be harder for us to make i mean if we don't have guilford's input for example if we don't know what the town is actively engaged in and where their where their priorities lie it's going to be difficult for us to have the same kind of effect you know the same kind of perspective on what we think the priorities are right so so that's the only problem right with going to outside of town government which i still think is a viable option but it makes us less effective right because i guilford you're so useful on you know so many things and you understand how you know we're work how the government is working and what's actually doable i mean you have so much knowledge that makes us really i mean it helps us make informed decisions you know and in the absence of that it would just take another step right it will take us longer to reach real consensus about things so so i mean so what do we i mean we're definitely we more valuable this. in government that's what i'm saying I mean, I've always taken, I mean, I do appreciate advocates, but I mean, my whole background, especially, you know, like re, I mean, I have a background in planning and policy and I try to work like within the system, even though I, I have to say, as we've talked about, it can be really frustrating, right? And so I'm not, I mean, I've actually been told by some people, like, I'm not an effective advocate <laughs> because what? I'm like always, well, just because I'm always thinking about you know, like the, uh, like the other side of issues and from mm -hmm. like the broader perspective, I'm not going to just advocate for one thing and just forget like the whole rest of the world exists and like all the other right. yep. mm -hmm. sides and things. But um, I mean, if it can work, I mean that I actually am supportive of the, you know, the idea of a transportation commission because they do work well in other communities, including Northampton, which has had one for decades. 
So I do hope that that's something that doesn't go away. So go for it. But um, if you don't mind, I'll just jump in and say, this has been like this for quite a while, as you've said, um, but it's because no one has wanted to give you the power and the support to do what you need to. Um, we haven't had a mechanism for taking people's complaints in years since I've been here. It's just like constantly it's whoever screams the most and right. complains the most gets the action. That's why the, that's why Cushman is getting yes. this attention right now. Cushman has got a, a guy who I think he's just independently wealthy or he, he's works from home or he's retired. I don't know what he is, um, but he has kids there and he's taken it upon himself to be the advocate to drive it. Um, it's, it's um, the, the council has, the council needs to decide how they're going to do this. And it's either the council TSO does it or the TAC does it, but you got to support whichever method and set it up to work properly. And that's not, and that's been the problem since, that's the, really been the problem since the TAC came into existence um, and this new council came into existence. It's just, well, actually, yeah, when the sure. council came into existence. So yeah. oh, you're, you guys are completely right. And I would say you need to really just say, what do you want to do? They actually have an item. It's not on this agenda for the TSO, but talking about making the TS to making a subcommittee of the TSO, which basically would, is taking you and giving you power. Um, or, I mean, again, the idea of like a commission, which actually has power, you know, and it's like built in with staffing and things. Right. Which is exactly what Northampton has and exactly right, what Cambridge yeah. has. They all have this ability to do things and to set things up and put the, put it in order and work through the order and not, but that's what we need. We need that. That's because what we otherwise, definitely I mean, that, that's, I mean, not that's why fair I support, otherwise. I mean, the people I know in Northampton has said it's worked well there. But, and, um, and they are still largely advisory, you know, but it's just like a format and it's a way of getting things done. But, so. but, the, but our, our forum is the only real equitable solution for the town because everything else, like, you you said Guilford is just the loudest person who often is also the person you know with the most time and and you know the availability right like the you know I I, I really feel that yeah Eve so, has a question so just to I don't know this is this is maybe my worst fears um kind of question but you know say that they create a commission and they give it more power. I mean, we kind of have seen that the council doesn't like to give up power and those that do have it want their agenda. Right. So how could you set up a commission that wouldn't basically be stacked by whoever controls the council in a way that, you know, that they want? Well, I mean, is that possible? If it's still controlled by the town manager, like the TAC is, which is, you know, for the overall scope of the town, right? I mean. But the commission is not. It would be like its own body that could do things. Um, by who? I mean, it, but it is true. I mean, like, I mean, with the commission, some of it would depend on who are the members of the commission, you know, and mm -hmm. what's the composition and what's the balance of staff or other people. But um, Bill has a question, too. Yeah, okay. I was just curious if we have the ear of any particular council person who, you know, is a big fan of the TAC. I mean, I think that some, there are some councillors who have identified that TAC does not work the way it is and that TAC is not utilized and who have suggested, who have been supportive of the idea of a commission or, of, you know, doing something more with TAC, but that just needs to move forward. You, so what you, is act, you actually so, do have some, sorry, you actually do have like a lot of counselors who want to see the process move smoother than it's moving because it doesn't move in TSO either. If you look at it, right? People, things, things go to TSO and get bogged down and never come out again. Right, um, sure. So yeah, absolutely. there's many counselors who got reelected who feel that way. And there's at least one I know who just got elected, who was a previous one who feels that way. Um, 
they want to they want to pattern pattern the commission after the liquor license commission and or the that we have in on the second floor. So if you want a liquor license or a peddler's license or any of those licenses that the town issues, it goes through this commission and it would mirror that commission is what they're talking about doing. Right. So, so I guess we do wait, need to wait, well, just to go back to my question. So who controls that commission, who appoints those commissioners and, and, and does it have the potential to be stacked in favor of certain interests? So <laughs> it can always be stacked. Um, I was just actually just about to go look at that. Why don't you talk about something else and I'll tell you who it is. <laughs> but I mean, I think that, I mean, the, the reason I like the commission is, I mean, I want something that's going to be sustainable, like, right. So like Kim has been on the tack for like ever, <laughs> you know, and your term will be up and like, I'll cycle off the tack and, and I mean, I, I don't need to be on the commission necessarily, you know, or what, but like, we want a structure that succeeds like year in, year out with whoever the counselors are and yeah whoever the commissioners are. And it's true that, you know, certain years, just like in other types of, you know, politic and government settings, like there'll be different priorities or something, but it will like continue and it will have like a good structure, like longer term. Right. And, you know, and if I wasn't involved, I mean, maybe I would decide like, hey, I'll just, you know, be part of an advocate group or something, but it's just like, it, it's lacking that structure now and it's lacking the clarity and the fact that we have a charge that goes back to the select board, you know, is just an indication of like, what, like the first problem <laughs> basically. So, so I guess the question is, um, I don't know if Chris is still here or not, but do we want to take a vote on anything tonight or do we want to wait and continue to discuss it? I mean, is it, is it, would it be possible to um, kind of, I, I mean, I think we should, I, I, I mean, I'd like to, be vote is that, to say something and yeah, my vote is that, I mean, my, I, I wouldn't mind making a motion to say that we um, would like to forward um, the previous memo mm -hmm. to the um, TSO, right. um, but that we um, collectively work on the cover letter for that, okay, sure. which includes, you know, the sentiment that you're conveying here. Yeah. So, so we, could do, we could do that for our next meeting and we could also, I could just so, bring up that we're yeah. talking about it. Is it possible to work on this preamble? I, I don't think it needs to be extensive. I think a paragraph is plenty. Right. But just to convey so, the sentiment that is uniformly felt uh -huh. by all members that so, were here tonight so and Kim, past you, members. I mean, not to give you homework, mm -hmm. so sort of. But I mean, if we want to keep something short, I like the idea of it being short and it just being like a, appended to, mm -hmm. you know, with the original memo behind it. Do we yep. want to, do you want to just put something together and we can sure. circulate it? Yes. And yes. Vote it yes. the next I will. meeting. And, yep. so, and I can One, bring up. I mean, if I speak in public comment, which I'm planning to at the TSO meeting, which starts in 10 minutes, but yeah, um, I can I can just bring up that like that we yes. talked about it at this meeting and like yes, we so on. So I think that okay. would be great. Eve has a question. Um, first of all, I, I love I love the idea of having Kim take a crack at this because I think you've kind of expressed a clarity in your frustration that is um really powerful, actually, honestly. So I love the idea of having you have a crack at drafting. And the drafting. council will be really glad to not hear from me. I'll say that yeah. right now. <laughs> what I was going to say is, you know, to just synthesize a lot of what folks have said tonight, I mean, do you feel like where you're coming out is commission or nothing? Or, or you know, an alternative, like, you yeah, know, yeah, a non government alternative, you know, yeah. like, do you feel like, because earlier, you were saying either use us or don't. So does that now translate to commission or we're going elsewhere? Or for me, I mean, isn't that the same thing? Like, well, it's a commission, I, it's us, I mean, it's in it's, theory, it's, you could, we need you could have, right? you could have the tack and its current structure be used more in theory. 
Yeah, yeah. But I mean, a commission is just a tack. To me, a commission is just a tack with a new name, right? Just, well, it's a tack, but it's also yeah. not a tack because it would change. Well, I it know. Would, it's, it would it's not just be a resonance. And... Right. It, it, I mean, it's something that actually has teeth yes. and can do stuff. Uh, and I mean, that's where we realize we need to go. Yes. And it's um, ideally what would happen. But right. I mean, and it, I think it would depend yeah. a lot on, like, to Eve's question, I think it would depend a lot on what the Transportation Commission looks like. And and those are the questions that the counselors were asking, the, the counselors who are supportive of there being a commission, the ones who aren't, about what exactly is, like, the scope of the commission, like, who's on the commission and those things. And that, answering those questions, and they asked, right, the town manager to report back to them as he looked into how other communities have done it is um, the answer to those questions would really form for me at least like how I would feel about it, how I would feel about it as an entity or not. So, well, so. to your question, Eve, I feel personally like if we're, we continue to be used like we were with the original council, I feel like, you know, we did our job still, we were still doing a job that was worthwhile. I don't feel like I'm being you we're being used for anything worthwhile at this, you know, over this last council, pretty much for the most part. Um, and, you know, to be able to have the um, freedom to do things like, hey, let's think about uh, an overall plan for the town, right? Which is what we had worked on um, a couple, a few years ago. Um, which, you know, is not something that is a particular concern at the moment, but it's like a grand plan that, you know, those kinds of issues are the kinds of issues that we could be used for. So even if we're used, but in that sense, in a, in a broad perspective sense, as a tech, I'm still happy to do that. I feel like I'm contributing to, um, a plan for, for our, for us and like contributing to the good of our town, but currently in the current state feel like nothing. So commission would be great. You know, I can see a total role for that as well, but to just, yeah, I mean, it feels like what's happened now is basically Tracy spends all another halftime job beyond her existing full-time job, just keeping right. up with other meetings in town to try to find out things happening related to transportation that no one's bothering to tell the tech about. And then Tracy comes back and tells you guys about it and then decides whether the TAC wants to weigh in in the other forum. But no, you know, that just requires so much extra work. And and like our whole plan when the TAC was created was basically we were saying that anytime there's an issue that comes up that's related to transportation, including like planning a new development or, you know, whatever, parking, we weren't going to do parking, but we wanted to be asked about parking in when it might, you know, because it could affect broader transportation issues. Like we were basically asking the town all across in all its, all its roles to come to us. And now... Like it's like Tracy is scraping what no, they're no, doing. Not necessarily. <laughs> but um no, and I do think that some counselors are better communicators on these and more likely to invite TAC to conversations or whatever. So um, but just to wrap up, I guess so for it sounds like we do want to have a meeting in December sometime. Um, and we'll see also if TSO refers anything to us. But it sounds like that nothing can really go forward with the Cushman study. And with the Cushman safety zone until there's actually the study and the study isn't going to happen until the new year. So right. And they and, can't really move forward on that. Even though there's that December 18 deadline, it's just gonna they're gonna report back and say we don't have the study yet. And so did the South really, Amherst Common study ever happen? Remember that one? I mean I mean that I wasn't even on the tax I mean, that and but that you brought that up too. Like that was one of our that was on our list. So I think for the next yeah, but thing but Come on, there there was also the pandemic that happened, right? I mean, I mean, and then no one was tra traveling to UMass anymore. I mean, it wasn't useful to South do South Amherst thing. is still in that comment. It's yes, still but what I'm saying yeah. is, I mean, we had a plan, but then, you know, I, I, I it's a problem. <laughs> yes, 
But I mean, we had a solution at the time, but then the pandemic happened and the transportation changed dramatically. I don't think that's a re really fair. Sure. Well, um, no, I was thinking like it could have come like that study maybe oh, should I come see. back before a new study on a new place that just, I don't know, but right. like it's worth at least asking that question. <laughs> the loudest, you know, person getting the, the yeah. Yeah, study. Um, all right. So in terms of December, let's just pick a date and then I'm going to hop onto the TSO meeting. And okay, Kim, great. If you want to come make a public comment, feel free. <laughs> yeah, I might because I feel really jazzed up at the moment. So maybe um, I I don't have that link, but maybe they you could. Do ha they have the, I know, and they put the public comment right at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. And I have occasionally Great. missed it. <laughs> so okay, I'll so just, let's do it. Let's I mean, go. Let's, let's do it. Um, but, um, yeah, actually, Tracy, sorry, just a quick one. Yeah. Can you send out the Zoom link? Yes, because uh, we're all going to come. Okay, oh, right, you're phone. all on the, ch oh, okay, sure. Um, hold on. Send it, just like, send it to it the email. Um, email. I'm email I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can I, oh, I can't chat. Okay, I'll send no, it right send now. No, send us an email. Send us the email. Yeah. Gilford, right. will you be at that meeting too? No? Okay. All right. Next good night. Time. Thank so, you so much, um, All right, so December 14th. Okay, December sounds 14th. good. Yep. Okay, all right. Because the 7th is the first night of Hanukkah. Okay, and I'll I'll get... A letter together. And send us something. Yep. Yeah. I, I might okay. actually be Thank driving you. back from New Jersey that day All again. Right. <laughs> All right. I will um send out the link to Thank TSO you. right now. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye, you everyone. So much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, Thank you Bye. Bye Marcus. Bye. Safe driving. Bye. Bye, Bye. Joe. Bye. Bye. Bye, Joe. Bye.